already we have seen the uniformly random sampling already we have seen um, already we have seen the concept of random sampling already we have learned and how we will doing this job by simple doing the by simply using the uniform distribution by using uniform distributions we have done the random sample that uh, one of our previous video we have learned this thing now here we will teach very important very important and idea in the sampling technique we have we will learn this thing proportional sample let's see what is let's try to understand these things through an example suppose let's take we have a set of numbers suppose let's take we have a set of numbers five numbers we have a set of five numbers here so let's take its number is five numbers first second third fifth we have a five numbers. we have taken here two three four five okay and the value for this five number suppose let's take its value is t1 its value is t2 its value is t3 its value is t4 its value is t5 suppose let's take this value and the array that we have let's call this is d and suppose suppose let's take we have some value we have taken some value suppose let's take the first value first value that we have here 2.0 second value is suppose let's take 6.0 third value that we have here 1.2 <clears throat> the fourth one is suppose let 6.8 third one suppose let's 20 so this value we have here so this number okay now the tax that we have to do here the tax so the tax that tax tax is here peak and element we have to pick an element or from this from this now from this array we have to pick an element from this array that the n element from this array of suppose let's say three element we have taken here example of course if we have n elements here n is equals to five so such that the probability of the picking of an element is proportional to the these values proportional to this that's the job that we have. so the job is here we have to pick an element we have to pick an element among among the this n element suppose let's take here we have n is equals to 5 the n elements among the n elements such that condition is such that the probability of such that the probability of picking an element Which proportional to to the values of this this array? Means here value is what proportional to the values of the T H seven here with the value is T. This is the tax that we have to. The first thing that we have to remember. So the we have to pick an element such a way the probability of the picking element probability of the picking an element proportional to the these three things we have to make. okay it will be proportional to the value of this it will be proportional to the value of this array. that's the thing that we have to do. 
I think you got got some idea about our task. What is your main task? Yeah, we are interesting. Okay, that's that. Suppose let's take let's try to understand more specifically. Suppose let's take here we are trying to find this element twenty. Suppose let's take we are trying to find this element twenty. So here just see this here among this five element here twenty is the most larger one. So for this element, what will be the chance? So the for this element, so the picking the probability will be larger for picking up this element. For this twenty element, picking its probability of picking this element about. probability of picking 20 is is larger than others that is the thing that you have to do here it's 20 is the large one so the, it's picking the probability of the picking of this element will be larger than now let's try to take another element. Suppose let let this one point smallest one. The, this the third element or the smallest one. So what will be the probability? So for this element, the probability will be so for this element, the probability of picking one point two is smaller will be smaller than the others okay so the if you pick the two its probability will be larger than 1.2 but this probability will be smaller than 5.2 means the value the probability will be the peak the probability of the picking of the elements will depend on the values of this element that's actually the call the sampling proportional sample means according to the value of this element the probability will be like that but in we will see random sample what is the probability if you just take the random sample what will be the probability for the random sampling means for uniform distributions its probability is equal it for here in probability probability of picking this element is equal but here the probability of picking for probability sampling the probability of picking of the element is is proportional to the its value that's the main difference Okay, now let's try. Let's see how these things, uh, how this job we will do. How this job we will do here. So we have to maintain here some steps in this job. Suppose let's take first step. So step. Let's try to understand the step one first. Let's try to step by step. Try to see these things step by step. So in step one, we have some sub steps. So in step one, first. In in substance in first in the step one first that thing we have to do we have to calculate the sum of this value so what will be the sum here first we have to calculate the sum so sum value to here will be um, i is equals to 1 to n di's so here here n is what n is 5 so if you just if you just take the if you just make the summations of this element you will got if you make the summations of these element these elements then you will got the 35 this value will be 30 
here our n is equals to 5 okay means simple these things means these things means i am talking about the computing the sum i am talking about computing the sum values <coughs> of <coughs> of is element of t that's the thing that's the first thing that in second thing that we have to do it will be the second thing that we have to do the second thing we have to make the normalized by using some have to make the normalized by using simple to make the we have to make the normalizing by simple using the sum value the sum value is what we have to make the normalizing by using simple this thumb how we will doing this job how we will do this thing so here suppose let's take the first normalizing value d1 test we will do di by simple s we will do di test it's simple di by ds that the you the formula that we have to use here this formula we have to use so what will be the value so d1 test what will be so if you calculate it d1 yes di is means what di means 2.0 yeah, it means 2.0 as is means what as is means 35 35 if you calculated these things this value will be approximate equals to 0 0.0571 similarly for d2 test if you calculate it just using your calculator you yeah, you will calculate it then for this value actually before this lecture i have calculated just cal just using this formula calculate it in your own we will got this value so d3 dash it will be 0 0.0343 d4 dash will be 0 0.1657 d5 dash it will be 0 0.5714 okay just just do these jobs using your own calculator then you will got this okay so just if you just visualize this thing closely so h values is is normalized value is lie on 0 to 1 is value is lie on 0 to 1 because why why these things lie on because we have calculating if you just summed up uh, this value 0 to 1 and the sum of these values that's the first observation the second observation is sum of the dit test di test is equals to why these things are one actually suppose let's see this thing. why these things if you sum this value it's to 1 to in the i test if you summed up this value will be simply summed up i is equals to 1 to n the i by s means if you take in the sum over it will be some as is so because of that it's <clears throat> because these things are s these things are s yeah, from on we will get this value second step that you have to do the third step next third step <coughs> Now let's see this thing. Third step. What is third step? Now in third step, we have to calculate the cumulative sum. 
commutative normalization. Then let's see how these things. What is actually commutative normalization? This means simply. Cumulative normalized sum that you have to calculate. Let's try to understand what we'll get from here. You just remember, just, just rewrite these things. I think it will be better, understand, easy to understand. So we will got T1 dash T is equals to what? 0 0.0571. We will got D2 dash T is equals to what? You will got these things is equals to 0 0.171. 428 d3 test means what we got the this d3 test is equals to simply 0 0.0343 d3 test means what we'll got this value 0 0.1657 and d5 test means what d5 test means 0 0.5714 these values we have got after normalizing using the sum this value we have got the the cumulative sum that we have got cumulative sum that we have to make from that first cumulative sum let's take t1 t1 tilde t1 tilde it's similarly same is equals to d1 it will be same as t1 so its value will be 0 0.0571 okay so that now not d2 tilde next sum that we have this value will be t1 tilde plus d2 test means we have used this sum as we have to add this value okay so what will be this value if you calculate it using your own calculator Two eight five two eight. This value. Huh? Second cumulative, third cumulative sum. It will be e two delta plus e three test. Just sum up. Cumulatively means commutative, commu combining something. In another language, this cumulative normalized term is called the combining sum. Okay. <coughs> This sum to value will be 0 0.262828. Like that, if for tilde, it will be d3 tilde plus d3 tilde plus d4 dust. These things will be 0 0.4285. Like this kind of just I am just using your own calculator, just calculate it and write down. Don't copy paste for me, it may be wrong. Okay, just I have calculated using my own, it may be wrong. I am not always correct. By simply, if you just sum up this value, it will be okay. Like, like such kind of value, we will get. So this di tilde value is now called the this value. This di tilde is called the cumulative norm value. This value are called the cumulative normalized value. Cumulative These values are simply called the cumulative normalized. Okay, that's the third step. In third step of the step one, that we have to. Okay, I think you will got the got some got the. I think the step one is clear. It's simple. First, we have to doing the sum. After that, we have to make the 
normalized by using the sum value and after that we have to calculate the cumulative normalized sum value that's the three step we have to do in the step one now come to the step two what do we have to do in step two let's see let's see what we have to do in step step two in step two means we have to first take a random sample from the from the uniform distributions of 0 to 1 we have to sample one value we have to take we have to take means we have to sample we have to take a sample one value we have to take a sample one value suppose let's take this sample one value let's take this value that we have to take here and it's come from where this value will come from this value will come from a uniform distribution between 0 and between the uniform distribution between 0 and 1 that's things already we will learn now we will record the how these things are important step by step how these Gaussian distributions are important, how this uniform distributions concept is important. I think you will got the idea. Okay. So from this uniform distribution, we will take one sample randomly. Okay. So if you just write this thing in Python, if you just write this code is using Python, how will write this? For example, using the NumPy library, we have to first call the NumPy library. NumPy, then on the NumPy, they are happy function random. On the NumPy, they are happy function random. And on the random, we have the uniform distribution. This uniform we have to, we have to keep the range 0 0.1 to 1.0, and we were interested to pick the one value. Okay, simple number that we are number that's the function that we have to write in python a simple this is a simple function that we have okay so let's take it get the value after after picking this random value from this distributions uniform distribution suppose let's take the value we got this value is r 0 0.6 suppose let's take that value we got r is equals to 0 0.6 that we got got here so the r value is lying on this range R will be lie on 0 to 1. It may be it is uniformly distributed. It it's probably to lie on anywhere is equal. Its probability are equally probable. It will be lie anywhere on this range. Suppose let's take this value is lie on that 6 0 0.6 and somewhere here. Somewhere here. Suppose let's take this value is 0. Somewhere like here, like it is okay. <clears throat> the second step that's all. Now let's let's see what is the third step that third step. Let's try it on that. What is the third step that we have? Now let's see. In third step, what do we have to do? So in third step, that things that we have to do, we have to make the proportional sampling. Now let's try to understand the concept of proportional sampling. What is this? Now, in third step that we have to do, we have to make the proportional sample. We have to make the proportional sampling. Okay. Now let's try to grab this concept. So first that part that we have chosen, it, uh, the chance the chosen are it may be okay anywhere here, anywhere here. So, so we have to make some conditions. If first thing we have to check if this r if less than is equals to if this bar is less than or is equals to d1 tilde. Okay, means d1 h tilde means is commutative normalized some value are lie on also. 0 to 1 okay 
if this r value is less than is equals to this d1 tilde then we have to make the return then we have to then i have to return return if means also else if it will better language else if this r is less than is equals to d2 tilde then we have to then we have to make the return return first we have to return one then in this step if these things happen we have to return two else if r is less than equals to d3 tilde if these things happen then what then we have to return three okay else if if these are, are less than is equals to d4 tilde then we have to return oh wait i have to I have taken this uniform color. Then I have to return 4. Similarly for 5 also. Else if i is less than is equals to d5, then we have to return. That is the program. Okay, now let's try to understand why these things are actually we have taken. Suppose, suppose d1 tilde means what? <coughs> d1 tilde means what? If you just try to understand these things, d1 tilde means something that d1 value, d1 means what? It is the normalized sum value of the d1, of the d1 that we have in our array. Okay, and d2 tilde means what? d2 tilde means simple the uh, summed up of the past two value if you just sum up these two things if you just summed up these two things so if you summed up these two things then you got the d2 tilde okay if you just sum up these three things in this three value if you just sum up these three values then you got d3 tilde you summed up four values like that so now now the questions that comes into our mind if you subtract this this means d1 tilde and d2 d1 d1 just the same if you just subtract these two things if you make the subtraction for me then what will we get? Then we will get d2 dust. Okay. If you subtract this from here to here, if you make the subtraction from here to here, then how? Sorry, sorry, subtraction. I'm doing mistake. Sorry, sorry for that. Extremely sorry. I'm extremely sorry. Okay, that's things are used for making the commutative symbol. Reversely, we, we use this thing. <clears throat> if we make the subtractions between these, these two, this one, and if we make the subtractions between this, then you will get the D2 dash. Okay. If we make the subtraction on these two things, on these two things, if you make the subtractions, then you will get it will be d two rest minus okay. Then you will get then you will get d three rest. If we make the subtractions between these two, then you will get d four test. 
mingle the things also if we make the subtraction between these two then you will get d5 test okay i think you got the idea similarly here if you sum up then you got come to rest here if you subtract up then you got come to rest here okay <coughs> And now try to understand this. So, so what is the importance of the probability for the probability simply? So let's try to understand. So the probability of picking up four. So here how what what here suppose let's take here uh, in this example say have, that we have taken here probability r is equals to zero point six r is equals to zero point six here in these examples. So how where it will lie? So if you just look up this table 0.6 it is less than 0.6 no it is less than 0.6 no it is less than equals to 0.6 no less than equals to 0.6 no it is less than is equals to 0.6 yes so it is less than no. so where does r is lie so lie r r so r is less than not this no this not this not this so r is less than from this value on this value uh, means d5 so r is lie on here right here somewhere here r is lie so here this equals to 0 0.6 somewhere here between this somewhere here between this the r is lie okay so if r less than is equals to r5 then what return we have written what let's just see this thing then we will return 5 so what what value we have written here so r is 0 0.6 r is 0 0.6 here so on that range so here we will return value 5 so this are uh, happen in this case on our case these things are happen lie here so so we return so here we will return 5 if our r lie in the here so if our right suppose let's take suppose let suppose suppose let our lie r lie on this chain let let then then we return are live on these strings then we will return okay now the probability what is the concept of probability are important here now try to understand this if suppose let's take we return it so the probability now the concept come into the picture the probability of now the now the probability of picking up the probability of picking up four means what this element fourth element four means picking up fourth element i'm talking now the probability of probability of picking up fourth element the probability of picking the fourth element it will be probability of r probability of r lying between d3 tilde and d4 tilde d4 sorry it will be d4 <clears throat> so if you choose the fourth element we choose the fourth element 
Now these things, the probability for picking this element will be lie on this region. I lie on these regions, on these regions, because we have chosen, because we have taken here ran uniform distribution. Okay. So if you choose probability of picking the fourth element, now probability of picking the fourth element it is lie on this region. Probability of the R, probability of R lying in between this region. Okay. Same concept. Probability of picking the fourth element, the same things also probability of R because we have here doing the cumulative sum because of that because of that okay now these things means what these things means what probability of r between uh, probability of r lying between what is the actual probability of this first the probability of lying between if you just see this thing what is the difference of this thing the difference of the two things is d4 test the difference of the means the gap of this means gap between d3 tilde and d4 tilde this will be a simple gap probability of it lying the r this value will be d4 test this value will be d4 test this simple this d4 test are proportional equals to we put the value of the fourth element Okay, just see this thing. Proportional B D4 means what? Theta D4 means just using this thing can conclude that the proportional to from step one B you can conclude. From step one B, we can conclude that step one B can conclude that. I think you got the idea how this probability are actually working because this is our main task that we have interest to do. So the the task the task that we are interest to do the task is the element that we will going to pick. Probability of picking on that element will be equal to the proportional is proportional to the value of that element. Okay, that's the task that so the same jobs also doing if we taking the fourth element if we picking the fourth element on the element from our element if we taking the fourth element uh, on the uh, picking the fourth element the same a probability will be the probability of r that lying between d3 to d4 since r is uniformly distributed coming from the uniformly distributed but the R3 tilde and R4 delta that's a built up by using simple like cumulative sum. So because of this, because of these things, because of these things, the probability of R that lying on this region with the chance it will lie on this. Okay. And the this the probability value this simple will be the gap between these two things, these two things. The gap will be d4 tilde, d4 dust at that d4 dust is simply proportional to the d4 because you can conclude that think the probability of picking the fourth element will be proportional to the its value that is actually it's that's the thing that we have to job that we have to do in the in the proportional sample okay i think from this explanation you got some idea how the proportional sample are actually actually work and when we will go into the case study sections, then we will see these things, how these things are actually useful in, in, in real world. We will see these things when you go to the, when you go to the case study sections. And in, in, in other theorem also, other theorem in machine learning also, you will see these things. How the proportional sampling concepts are actually used. So, so a huge amount of uses this sampling technique we will see this thing when we, when we discuss the case study as well as when we discuss the others theorem in the machine we will see this thing how oh, it's important is what is actually it's important.